A disparate realm unfolds in the American sitcom television series known as A Different World. This show graced the NBC network, spanning six seasons and delivering a commendable 144 episodes. Serving as a derivative of The Cosby Show, it held its ground from September 1987 to July 1993. Initially conceived to revolve around Denise Huxtable's life and the experiences of students at Hillman College, it drew inspiration from the vibrant life at historically black colleges and universities. Throughout its broadcast, a different world consistently secured the top or second spot in viewership among African Americans. Despite more than two decades passing, the sitcom endures as a cherished favorite among the youth of its era. The television comedy, featuring an ensemble cast, introduces various members in this video, highlighting those who have departed in reality. On our channel, we showcase such videos, don't forget to show your support by liking, commenting, and subscribing. Mary Alice Mary Alice, the renowned performer celebrated for her appearances in a different world and glimmer, has passed away. She reached the age of 85. Alice departed on July 27, 2022, at her residence in Manhattan, as confirmed by a law enforcement representative for People. The cause of her passing remains undisclosed. Alice is most prominently recognized for her portrayal of Letitia Letty Bostick on NBC's A Distinct Universe and Effie Williams in the 1976 original rendition of Glimmer, recounting the Supreme's rise to prominence. She also assumed the role of the Oracle in The Matrix Revolutions and embodied Marguerite Peck in I'll Soar Away a performance that earned her the Emmy Award for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series. Her stellar contributions led to a Tony Award for Best Featured Actress in a Play in 1987 for her part in August Wilson's Fences. Acknowledging her remarkable career, Alice received induction into the American Theatre Hall of Fame in 2000. She eventually concluded her acting journey in 2005, according to her IMDb page. Her final appearance on screen was documented in that same year for an episode of the reimagined drama series Kojak. Lou Myers Lou Myers, a thespian with credits in cinema and the stage, though predominantly recognized for his recurring role on the television series A Different World, passed away on February 19, 2013 in West Virginia at Charleston Medical Center following a cardiac-related emergency. He was 77. His initiation on Broadway occurred in 1975 when he assumed the role of Reverend Mosley in the Negro Ensemble Company's rendition of Leslie Lee's The First Breeze of Summer, a character he had previously portrayed in the play's earlier off-Broadway production. Notably, Myers was an original cast member of August Wilson's The Piano Lesson in 1990, embodying the suave, conniving jazz musician Whining Boy. In the realm of film, Myers graced productions such as Tin Cup, The Wedding Planner, and How Stella Got Her Groove Back. Born on September 26, 1945, in Cabin Creek, WV, he had recently returned to reside in his native state. The musical prowess showcased in The Piano Lesson and occasionally on A Distinct Universe was inherent as he commenced his artistic journey as a jazz and blues vocalist. He is survived by his son and a 95-year-old mother, Jeanette Dubois. Jeanette Dubois graced the show as Brenda Haynes, recognized for her memorable six-season tenure on the CBS sitcom Good Times, Jeanette Dubois was discovered deceased in her Glendale, California residence this Tuesday. According to TMZ, her family disclosed that the actress passed away unexpectedly during her sleep. She was reported to be 74 years old. Born Jeanette Dubois in Brooklyn, New York, as per one source. Her role as the supporting character Willona Woods on the Maud spin-off was elevated to the lead position in the fifth season in 1977-78, when Esther Roll temporarily departed Good Times. During this period, Dubois' character, Willona, 
took in a young girl named Penny Gordon, portrayed by Janet Jackson, and continued on the series until its finale on January 30, 1980. In 1995, Dubois earned a Cable Ace Award for Best Supporting Actress for her performance in the Lifetime movie Other Women's Children. In 2006, Dubois and the Good Times cast were honored with the Impact Icon Award at the TV Land Awards. Dubois was a mother to at least two children, Ronnie Dubois and Raj Christo Gupta, who succumbed to cancer in 1987 at the age of 36. Diahan Carroll Diahan Carroll, most recognized as Marion Gilbert, among the show's enthusiasts, is another member of the cast who has passed away. The encounter between Dominique Devereaux and Alexis Colby in episode 87 of the television soap opera Dynasty in 1984 marked another significant stride towards racial equality. Dominique, portrayed as glamorous, sophisticated, wealthy, and intelligent, mirrored the cunning nature of Alexis. Notably, she was also an African-American character. Portrayed by Dia Han Carroll, who succumbed to cancer at the age of 84, she proved to be a formidable counterpart to Joan Collins' Alexis, intensifying the nasty element in Dynasty. Carroll experienced four marriages and divorces, firstly to the record producer Monty Kay, with whom she had a daughter named Suzanne, then to a Las Vegas boutique owner, Freddie Glusman, from whom she separated due to physical abuse, followed by a union with Robert De Leon, a managing director of Jet Magazine who depleted substantial amounts of her finances before perishing in a car crash, and ultimately to crooner Vic Damone, who prioritized golf over their relationship. She was engaged to the British broadcaster David Frost from 1971 to 1973. Details about these relationships are unveiled in her memoir, The Legs Are the Last to Go, 2008. Carol is survived by Suzanne, a journalist, and two grandchildren, August and Sydney. Tupac Shakur. Tupac Shakur, who made a guest appearance in the series portraying the character Piccolo, left a lasting impact despite the brevity of his role, adding to the sitcom's overall enjoyment. On the fateful night of the shooting incident, Shakur had engaged in a Mike Tyson heavyweight match at the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas, accompanied by Marion Sugj Knight. Knight, who had enlisted Shakur to his Death Row Records label in the autumn of 1995, was also present. Later that night, as Shakur and Knight were en route to Knight's Las Vegas nightclub, they were targeted in a multiple gunshot attack while stopped at a red light. Shakur suffered several injuries and succumbed to them six days later on September 13, 1996. Widely acknowledged as one of the most gifted and influential rappers in history, Shakur was hailed by Rolling Stone in 2010 as one of the 100 greatest artists of all time. His posthumous recognition includes induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2017, the naming of a street in his honor in Oakland, California, and the bestowal of a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2023, Thomas McCall Ford. Thomas McCall Ford, renowned as Lamar Collins, among aficionados of the sitcom A Different World. Thomas Michael Ford, prominent for his role in five seasons of Martin Lawrence's sitcom Martin, passed away on October 12, 2016, as conveyed by his agent, Joy Purvis, to The Hollywood Reporter. At the age of 52, he departed. The actor, recognized as Tommy Ford, joined the Fox sitcom in 1992, portraying the character Tommy Strawn, the comedic sidekick, in over 100 episodes. After the culmination of the series, he secured roles in the Fox drama series New York Undercover as Lot Malcolm Barker and on UPN's The Parkers as Mel Parker. Preceding his breakthrough on the Lawrence series, Ford had appearances on MacGyver, Living Single, The Flash, Law and & Order, and the television adaptation of Uncle Buck. Ford's diverse career spanned over two decades in film, television, and theater. Noteworthy film credits over the years include 
Harlem Nights with Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor, Night in the City with Robert De Niro and Class Act with Kid and Play, James Avery, James Avery, acclaimed as the pin punisher by enthusiasts of the series, left an indelible mark on the sitcom, enhancing its memorability despite the brevity of his role. The robust character actor, renowned for his portrayal of Uncle Phil in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, passed away. Cynthia Snyder, Avery's spokesperson, informed the Associated Press that Avery succumbed on December 31, 2013 in Glendale, California, due to complications arising from open-heart surgery. He was 68. Standing over 6 feet 5 inches tall, Avery assumed the role of Philip Banks, the paternal and affluent lawyer, later judge, in the beloved TV comedy that catapulted Will Smith's acting career as his mischievous nephew. Snyder mentioned that Avery will appear in the film Wish I Was Here, directed by Zach Braff, and set to debut later this month at the Sundance Festival. Hailing from Atlantic City, New Jersey, Avery served in the U.S. Navy during the late 1960s in Vietnam. Upon returning to the U.S., he established roots in California and pursued studies in drama and literature at the University of California at San Diego. He is survived by his wife, Barbara, and stepson, Kevin Waters. Heavy D, Heavy D, another member of the ensemble from the series, has passed away. Heavy D made a guest appearance in a single episode of the show. Although the initial examination of Heavy D's remains yielded no definite conclusions, the investigative work by the Los Angeles County Coroner's Department has now concluded regarding the 44-year-old's cause of demise. When Heavy D was discovered outside his residence on November 8, 2011, he had collapsed but was conscious. The clot in his lungs likely impeded blood circulation, exerting substantial pressure on his heart. His passing occurred at Cedars-Sinai Medical Center. Contrary to initial speculations, pneumonia has been ruled out as a contributing factor to his death. Instead, drugs are implicated as indicated by a toxicology report that detected medication in Heavy D's system. He was using cough syrup as a remedy, Harvey informed the LA Times, though it was not a contributing factor. Known as Dwight Arrington Myers, Heavy D played a pivotal role in the hip-hop scene during the late 80s and 90s. Leading Heavy D and the Boys, he released five top 40 albums in the U.S., featuring the international hit single, Now That We Found Love, in 1991. Before returning to the stage in October 2011, Heavy D had not performed live for 15 years. Ron O'Neill Ron O'Neill, recognized as Mercer Gilbert by enthusiasts of the series A Different World, is another member of the cast from that program who has passed away. Ron O'Neill, a thespian renowned for his work on stage and screen, rode the crest of black exploitation cinema in the early 1970s, taking on the role of the stylishly adorned Harlem drug dealer in the 1972 blockbuster Superfly, has passed away. He was 66. O'Neill, diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in 2000, passed away on January 14, 2004 at Cedars-Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, as confirmed by his wife Audrey Poole O'Neill. Superfly, directed by Gordon Park Jr., presented a gritty low-budget narrative about a cocaine dealer who outwits the system, amassing wealth and departing the drug world proving to be an unexpected box office triumph in the summer of 1972. In 1996, he united with fellow black exploitation luminaries Pam Greer, Fred Williamson, Jim Brown, and Richard Roundtree in Original Gangsters, an urban action film that O'Neill regarded as a sort of a historic event, the only time we've been together on the screen. Alongside his wife, he is survived by his sister, Kathleen O'Neill, residing in Chicago. Josephine Premise Josephine Premise, another member of the ensemble from the TV comedy A Different World, has passed away. Josephine Premise portrayed the character Desiree Porter in the sitcom. The New York Times reported on April 13, 2001, the passing of Ms. Premise, 
the gravelly-voiced actress who delivered the pecan lyrics of Yip Harburg in the Broadway production of Jamaica, Ms. Premis, recognized for her skills as an actress, dancer, and singer, showcased her talents both on and off Broadway, as well as in nightclubs. Her debut on Broadway took place in the 1945 review, Blue Holiday, followed by appearances in Caribbean Carnival, 1947, and Mr. Johnson, 1956. Notably, she portrayed the astute and humorous Ginger in the satirical musical comedy Jamaica, featuring lyrics by Yip Harburg and music by Harold Arlen. The 1957 Caribbean-themed production served as a romantic vehicle for Lena Horne and Ricardo Montalban, providing Harburg the opportunity to satirize modern life and capitalist folly, albeit incidental to the plot. Ms. Premise's memorable performance is preserved on the cast album. She rendered songs such as Leave the Atom Alone, addressing humanity's role in the nuclear age, Yankee Dollar, an up-tempo piece about American tourists and their wealth, Little Biscuit, exploring the pitfalls of love, and What Good Does It Do? Roscoe Lee Brown. Roscoe Lee Brown, another ensemble member from the family TV series A Different World, has passed away. Brown, renowned as Dr. Barnabas Foster, among series enthusiasts. Whenever discussions arise about the late stage film and television actor Roscoe Lee Brown, who passed away at the age of 81, it's his distinctive voice that takes center stage. This resonant baritone made a significant impact in a range of roles, spanning from Shakespeare to serving as the narrator in Babe, 1995, and from reciting poetry to appearances on The Cosby Show. In the realm of theater, Brown earned a Tony nomination for his role in August, Wilson's Two Trains Running, 1992, a play exploring the rise of the Black Power Movement. He also delivered a noteworthy performance in another Wilson play, Joe Turner's Come and Gone, 1984, set in a post-slavery boarding house. However, Brown's true passion lay in reading poetry. He and actor Anthony Zerbe regularly presented Behind the Broken Words, a showcase of poetry and dramatic readings. Sidney Poitier remarked, Roscoe Lee Brown is the only person I know who can recite Without anything written in front of him, hundreds of poems. He was a connoisseur of poetry. He was a remarkable person in that regard. In addition to being a consummate actor, Rosalind Cash. Rosalind Cash, another ensemble member from the TV comedy A Different World, has passed away. Cash, known for portraying the character Dean Hughes, infused the comedic series with her remarkable acting prowess. Rosalind Cash, a seasoned actress in television, theater, and film, passed away on October 31, 1995, due to cancer at Cedars Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. She was 56. Originally from Atlantic City, Cash relocated to New York during her teenage years to attend City College of New York, where she established the esteemed Negro Ensemble Company. Commencing her career in the theater, she made her Broadway debut in The Wayward Stork in 1966 and contributed to productions such as Fiorello, Ceremonies in Dark Old Men, and Bozeman and Lena. Cash's filmography includes notable works such as The Omega Man, Uptown Saturday Night, and The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai, Across the Eighth Dimension. In 1987, she was honored with the Phoenix Award by the Black American Cinema Society for her accomplishments in motion pictures and was inducted into the Black Filmmakers Hall of Fame in 1992. Robert Guillaume Robert Guillaume, another ensemble member from the TV series A Different World, has passed away. Robert, who played a minor role in the sitcom, the actor Robert Guillaume, whose demise occurred at the age of 89, gained prominence for his television portrayal of the butler Benson Dubois. He secured two Emmy Awards, first in 1979 as the Best Supporting Actor in the series Soap, and subsequently in 1985 as the Best Actor for the spin-off series Benson. 
in the exaggerated parody of daytime soap operas presented in Soap, Benson's erudite and insightful perspectives served as a grounding force for the show. Benson, refusing to be subservient, held little tolerance for foolishness, a trait extending to most of the other characters. Upon transitioning to his standalone show, where he became the butler to Gene Gatling, the governor of a fictional U.S. state, Benson retained his sharp intellect, although with a more restrained wit, befitting a leading character. Over time, he even ran against his employer for the State House, and in a memorable scene, they awaited the election results side by side on the couch. He is survived by his second spouse, Donna Brown, whom he wedded in 1985, and their daughter, Rachel. Additionally, he leaves behind a son, Kevin, from his initial marriage to Marlene Scott, which concluded in divorce. Two daughters, Patricia and Melissa, from other relationships also survive him. Unfortunately, a second son, Jacques, from his first marriage, passed away in 1990. Hey everyone, we've reached the end of today's journey, and I hope you enjoyed the content as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. If you found value in what you saw, don't forget to hit that like button and share the video with your friends. Your support truly means the world to me, and it helps the channel grow. And speaking of uploads, check out these suggested videos on your screen right now. I've curated them just for you, so dive in and keep the content rolling. Your continued support motivates me to push creative boundaries and bring you even more exciting and valuable content.